Uh, so welcome everybody. Uh, there are, this is our last water cooler of the year. We started these, I think back in the fall. And the idea about these teacher water coolers is that it's, they're really supposed to be a casual conversation between teachers that would happen maybe at the water cooler if they had one, you know, walking by. But these ideas are shared with each other. And then hopefully networks can build and grow, but also that you get some ideas from how, how GLOBE looks in other places. So that's what we're going for. And Jeff, uh, he kindly rescheduled with us. We had to cancel one of them at the last minute, so he kindly rescheduled to May. Uh, this is, I know, a busy time of year for everybody, so thank you for joining us. And one of the things that we're gonna do is, I'm just gonna show you kind of where these came from for the first time. Um, we are doing Globe Research Symposia all over the country. There are six of them taking place. We are halfway through them. We've already had the one in the Midwest which is at the beginning of April. And then we had the Pacific one, and I see that Tracy's on the line, and she led that one out in California. And then we also, just last weekend, had one around the Seattle area. And tomorrow morning, I leave for Atlanta, Georgia, for the one in the Southeast. And the week after that, we have Mescalero, New Mexico, and then finally, two weeks after that, because uh, we're going to skip the Memorial Day holiday for an SRS, which is nice, and I'll have a little bit of breathing room before it's in Boston. So students come here, they share their research with each other, and there are some superstar teachers that have definitely been doing the teacher water coolers who are bringing students to those. And I know Jeff brought students last year, so he can talk about um, what the, his version of globe in the classroom. So I'm gonna let you take it from here, Jeff. It's real pleasure to meet you. Uh, you're the superstar of globe in the Midwest, I think, or one of them. Uh, and you had your couple minutes of fame on the Weather Channel, so I hope you talked about that with everybody that's getting online. All right, um, hi everyone. Good to uh, see you, nice to meet you. Um, I'm Jeff Bauman, and uh, do I have access to uh, share my my stuff, my screen? You just muted yourself there, bud. All right. So I am going to I just well, one sec. My apologies. There we go. And that's the one. All right. Uh, Jen, could you nod if you hear me? Okay, um, here we go, everyone. I'm gonna get going tonight uh, with my uh, my presentation. Uh, I'm gonna try to keep it real quick. So if you have questions and you wanna ask um, questions at the end, that's totally cool with me. I love sharing what we do. Um, for tonight, I just threw together some notes um, about what we do at Shoemate Middle School in Gibraltar, Michigan. Um, you look at this right here, you'll see that we've got a whole bunch of amazing science going on in our building. And it's really um, an honor to be part of our team and get to do so many cool things from Globe, Salmon, Sturgeon, Aaron Project, uh, Hovercrafts, uh, Cardboard Boats, um, CSI that we have in eighth grade, Health and Disease. I mean, it's just, it's a really, really cool um, place to work. And um, for those of you who don't know me, uh, I teach middle school science at Shoemate Middle School. I'm an adjunct professor at the University of Michigan Dearborn. And uh, recently, I just became a NASA Solar System Ambassador, which is a pretty cool thing. Um, I, I, I'm pretty happy about that. I got a cool little badge that says NASA on it, and to me, that's a really, really big deal. So, um, I've been working with uh, uh, Dave Byers. Um, he is, um, I really look up to him. He's really uh, pushed me to do, do some awesome things. He introduced me to GLOBE, and I wanted to be part of this. So big shout out to Dave before I take any credit for anything here. He's, he's the guy that has led me for so long. He's a good guy. So um, next up, uh, if you haven't liked us already, Shoemate Science on Facebook, uh, you can take a break right now and like that. It's okay. I won't get mad at you whatsoever. Shameless plug. I don't care. 
Um, my email uh, is right there, baumaj at jibdis.net. And um, if you want to find me on Twitter, it's at Jeff Bauman. Uh, this is the great crew that I get to work with, Mr. Irwin, Mr. K, uh, Mrs. O'Neill, uh, the only lady on our team, which we kind of feel bad for her some days, but she is a rock star. We have Mr. Sikora and Mr. D'Angelo. Um, love these guys and gal, great team. Um, and moving forward this year to go on the Weather Channel and talk about Globe and Weather STEM and the stuff we're doing at Shoemate Middle School. Um, the MSTA um, awarded me Middle School Science Teacher of the Year, which was huge. And then the University of Michigan Dearborn, where I work, they nominated me for the Distinguished uh, Digital Educator. So all the work that I've been doing with Globe Observer got recognized by my peers at U of M Dearborn. And this thing's just been going crazy. It's been a very, very huge year. Um, a lot of good science is going on. And it, it, I'm just, I'm happy to see that it, that's being recognized. And it's an honor, you know, big time. So um, we're getting science done. And that leads me to uh, here's where I work. This is the Shoemate Middle School Carlson High School campus. And this picture was taken by my students that were flying an Aaron kite um, with a uh, high with a high definition uh, GoPro on it. Um, they were doing some remote sensing. They were taking pictures from way up high. Um, they love flying the kites and taking pictures of Shoemate and the, and the, the neighborhood. Um, if the wind is just right, we can capture Lake Erie. You'll see that up in the upper left-hand corner there. And uh, the Aaron Project is a, a really special thing that we get to do, and we're, we're very lucky to, to do that at um, Shoemate. So um, moving on, moving on. Come on now. My apologies. I'm not sure why that's not going. Dude, my presentation got stuck. All right, give me just one second. I'm running into trouble there, my bad. Hey, Jeff, while you're getting that to work, can you say like how long have you been in Globe? I, I know you've been in it for a bit, but I don't know how long, like when did you get trained? Uh, I am going on year number four or five already. I've been doing it for a little while. Yeah, I think this is year four. I think maybe next year is year five. Okay. There we go. My apologies. I'm not sure why it did that. So um, I think I'm just going to leave it in this view. Is that okay with you? All right. So citizen science, it's a huge thing. At uh, Shoemate, we are on our third year of citizen science already. Um, over the past couple years, um, every hour I would train a student to um, go outside with another student and lead that student in our citizen science campaigns. And um, this year, um, I begged my, my boss, Mr. Cassie, awesome guy, to allow me to start a Globe Advisory class. And what we did is we put out um, the word that we were starting Globe Advisory. It's a 25 minute session every day. And the students that wanted to be part of my Globe Advisory classroom, they had to apply. So they had to fill out an application to be in my advisory. Uh, they had to commit to the uh, IVSS. Uh, we were gonna try to get to the SRS, but the distance was just too great for as many kids um, as we had this year. And I, to be honest with you, Jen, I don't think we had our our IVSS project. No, it was, it was spring break. That's what it was. We were, we were on spring break that week. So it just nothing aligned, right? So we didn't get to do that. Um, but they had to commit to the IVSS to doing a project. Um, they have to do Compass Math or Khan Academy. Um, instead of doing it during their advisory, like everyone else, they have to do it at home. So they, they have a huge commitment to do this. And they have to take measurements every day. And then um, as we were prepping our IVSS reports, they had to write in class or work at home on their IVSS reports. So um, it's, it's a big deal. And so this year um, we went from, you know, a couple kids every hour doing it and we turned it into, you know, kind of like a makeshift class and it's been beautiful. Um, I, I really like working with these kids. I like developing them as citizen scientists and um, to see where they are now compared to, the uh, beginning of the year, they've really come a long way. They're starting to, to speak the citizen science language and they, they get what's going on. They, they understand, um, you know, the change of numbers based on what they've collected based on season or, or whatever it is. So at Shoemate, we're measuring surface temp, soil temp, air temp, precipitation, soil moisture, clouds, 
uh, integrated hydrology, um, solved oxygen, pH, um, conductivity, and um, uh, salinity. Yeah, that's it. Uh, we're measuring those. Um, we get out, we use the air and stuff um, whenever we can. Uh, I would love to get out right now, but our fields are just sponges. They're soaking wet and you can't get the kids out in the fields right now. So it's kind of a bummer. So if it dries up a little bit, hopefully we can get out. Um, we started measuring tree height as far as, uh, as part of the ISAT 2 uh, mission with my good friend, Brian Campbell. He, uh, you know, talked me into doing that. Gotta love that. And then with my good friend, uh, Dorian Janney, we're looking at mosquitoes as well. So she, uh, she set up a team um, to met as part of the Mission Mosquito campaign. And um, we have students finding mosquito larvae now. So they're, they're all about it. They love that. Um, to house all this and to manage all of it, uh, I put everything in a Google Classroom. Um, we are a Google school. We, uh, we're one to one. And um, students, each student has a Chromebook. And so my advisory is, is housed inside this classroom. And so I put up announcements for students. Um, they have their own team folders inside of our Google Classroom. So they have all their data housed. Um, and then to make it even better, um, I, in, I invited some of my friends in. And so uh, Brian Campbell, I, I allowed him to join Daisky, Dr. Butler, Dorian, uh, Dr. C from University of Toledo, Kristen Weaver, Marilei Colin Robles, who's rock star. Uh, Jeff Bland's, you know, uh, some of my college students wanted to come in, check it out, um, just to see what middle school students are capable of doing with science. Um, Rich Backler from the county and uh, Mr. Wagner, our curriculum director. So we, we, we pulled experts into the classroom and um, these experts, you know, like Dave, uh, he would talk to the kids, he would give them ideas, he would post in the stream and they would respond to them. Um, Another example right here, uh, Dr. Butler, Dr. Tchaikovsky, they would post as well. And the kids, it, it was like talking to rock stars. I mean, David Bidlowski is a rock star. And, you know, the, the, I would say that would be one thing. But when they would come in and type some ideas, I mean, it would just blow it up. I mean, they were so much cooler than me. And it was awesome having them there because, you know, the whole thing went nuts. So, you know, we had experts uh, come on into the classroom. They were helping the kids um, with that. We were able to, uh, um, kids got in teams, uh, we formed groups, uh, they would work with some professionals, they, would, they developed their driving questions and then their hypothesis. So we would use Google spreadsheets and we would keep track of it, we would modify it, we would change it. And then moving forward, like I said, all of their work was housed underneath the classwork section. So each kid, uh, each team, I'm sorry, had their own folder with everything stuffed in there and with Google, you can share access, like you know we all know. And so uh, anyone with a link, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, anyone with a link can view. So every kid in our Globe Advisory could see what the other teams were doing, and they could work together. They could get ideas, and you know they really helped themselves. Um, it, it was really a beautiful thing. Um, moving along, our advisory, like I said, we developed teams. It got so big and the kids were so proud of being in this advisory, they designed shirts for goodness sakes. I mean, look at this, I got one on myself. And so they, they came up with you know, an idea and then they worked with Let Love Rule right down the street and they were coordinating with the designer and so they came up with this year's t-shirt. And so now it's kind of like a thing where we're gonna have our own t-shirts every year. We're gonna maybe change the design a little bit. The kids are gonna develop it. And so, I mean, they really took ownership of this thing and they, they blew it up, so it was cool. Um, and then I have some pictures of the kids at work. So right here on the left, we have Bella. She, um, she takes pictures of clouds just because they're beautiful and then she will email them to me and she's so awesome. And I would love to see her uh, get like an internship with Marilay uh, someday and do some cloud work because she's so into this and it would, it would mean so much to her. Um, we used our weather stem system right there on the right to find uh, the conditions associated with active mosquito season. So we were pulling data, um, looking at precipitation, humidity, and temperature based on what weather stem had pulled um, for the two years prior during active mosquito season. So the kids had to go in, find the data, and, and find what those conditions are. That was phase one of the research. And then here's a picture of them. Uh, we have Olivia, Sophia, and then we have Bailey. Uh, Mohammed's not in the picture. Um, but they work to find these conditions. They use Zoom on my computer in my classroom. There's Dorian on the right doing uh, her mosquito thing. She loves talking mosquitoes. 
and uh, she hates them, but she loves talking about them. Um, but you know, she was guiding the kids' research, so we had experts coming in, guiding them, motivating them, and making them just go out get it for themselves. It was really cool. So that was my mosquito team. Uh, right here, we would go out in the snow. Uh, we have Brady and we have Thomas, and they're measuring. That picture is awesome. I think that should be a NASA picture right there. I'm sorry. I know I'm biased and all, but that's that's a really cool picture. They're go they're out in the snow, you know, measuring tree height, and they didn't stop all winter long. You know, they they got to talk um, with Brian Campbell a few times by by Zoom, and um, you know that really motivated them. So they did some great things. Right here we have our salinity team. Um, they're using some of they're using the Vernier equipment. Um, from the Aaron project. And so right here, they're looking at a sample of the sidewalk salt uh, that we, our, our custodians use here at, at Shoemake um, to see what the uh, PPT is on that. And then over on the right side, that blue salt, that's actually county truck salt that um, I actually was able to obtain. And this is kind of a bad story, but the um, uh, one of our Wayne County, uh, county uh, plow trucks, uh, ran into um, our ditch and was stuck in our ditch this winter. They kind of forgot where they were and they ditched it. And so they tipped the whole truck and then the salt all came pouring out. So when the guy was looking, I kind of up and pretend like I was shoveling and like, you okay, man? But I secretly stealing road salt from my students. Don't tell anybody, I know you're recording it. So, um, you know, with, with our hydrology teams, you know, knowing how much uh, salinity is or how much salt is in our front ponds these ponds empty into the creek which then empties into the river and we have all this wildlife uh, we have the wetlands you know knowing what um, these values are is so important and then to take it one step further in my classroom and this isn't tied to globe but I mean this impact is huge my kids are raising salmon um, from eyed eggs and we're we were supposed to release today but our park um, that we normally go to is completely flooded 80% covered with water and we had to cancel the trip today because there's just too much water. The wind out of the east blew all the, the water back up and it flooded everything. So we have to wait till next week, hope it dries up a little bit. So we have salmon and to take a step further, we raise a lake sturgeon in the classroom as well with sturgeon for tomorrow. And so wanting, it's so important to know, you know, what's going on with our water and being able to provide clean water for these fish it, it's it's huge there's there's such a nice connection between the two um moving along i've got teams that measure uh rain for both globe and coco Raz. um they were really into the in, into rain and then when winter came and they got to start measuring snow man that was awesome so we have um three different stations uh set up in our courtyards so every day during advisory Morrison, Lauren, and um, Nolan, they get to go and retrieve the rain gauges. They measure them. They, they submit all the data themselves. And their project this year uh, focused on how much um, does rain vary on the same campus with, you know, three rain gauges that are actually less than a, a football field away from each other. So they, that was their study. Um, great kids. Uh, students that measured surface temp with Dr. C. Um, right here we have Addie. I mean, what kid doesn't like using a laser? They're so cool, you know? So Addie uh, was really into it. And again, here's another student. This is Chloe. And like I said, students know how to enter the data themselves. Uh, when I started off, you know, two years ago, I was doing a lot of the data entry. They're doing it now. So um, it's, it's awesome. You get them trained, you get them going. You know, there's about a two-week investment in there at the beginning of the year. But once they get rolling, it, it's, it's so cool to see. And then, you know, just some data from the past, you know, um, it's not just about taking the measurements, it's, it's what does that data look like? So we've, we had some kids um, graph some of it in the past, and then um, I might pull the data from time to time and use that as, you know, formative assessment while I'm doing a weather lesson or, or wherever I feel like pulling it in my classroom, I'll, I'll do that. Um, and then, you know, in terms of GLOBE, GLOBE is such a, a big thing. Um, it's 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 at my house too now. I mean, I'm sitting in my my basement getting ready to get this weather stage on my barn linked up to Globe. And um, my daughter, um, this is Leah, and uh, she goes to Grosiel Middle School, and they do not have a teacher that's Globe certified. I'm gonna keep that opinion to myself. But um, for her uh, distinguished scholars, um, her 
projects the last two years have been based on globe work and and her work um, with hydrology. So this is Leah last year taking her measurements through the ice. And this year, uh, her study focused on um, precipitation's impact on the canal's pH right down the street. So she um, was watching the weather. She went and took her measurements before the rain and after the rain, and she was on top of it, man. So, um, you know, definitely a proud dad here. But, I mean, Globe is such a, a cool, cool thing that, you know, I love it. We do it at home, too. I got a Coco Ross rain gauge in my backyard as well. So um, you're going to be a citizen scientist, walk the walk, you know. And that's that's what we do at the Bauman House. So um, I, I don't have too much other than that, but these are just some ideas of things that that I do. And um, I think what I'll do is I've been on, I've been talking for about 15 minutes. So if, do you have any uh, questions? I love Brian Campbell's shirt in this picture here. It's the best. I have a question. Your advisory, you said, is 25 minutes. Uh, so what do you get done in that 25 minutes? Do those kids like grab the equipment and head right out to do their measurements? And so it takes a, you know, a while to get to that. Like what? I can't they, believe you're in 25 minutes. <laughs> they so are so that. incredibly fast with it. They actually um, have those measurements done within 10 to 15 minutes, Jen. They are it's it's like clockwork and um you know the the tree team they probably it takes them the longest because they they have to measure a tree like three times so we have a bunch of trees on campus and for ice sat too the the big thing is in the, the fall they wanted it measured with leaves and then they wanted in the winter time you to go back and, and measure it without leaves and um you know that that really took off this year um it, it was a little rough at the beginning um but you know my students there, they, they got it down. You know, their Chromebooks are there. They all have Globe accounts. And so they, they get in the room, they open their Chromebooks, they go to the Globe website. They're all logged in with that student account. And then as soon as the pledge and announcements are over, um, they get the stuff or if there are some days um, where the pledge, I'm sorry, where the announcements are going a little bit long, um, they kind of get my nod and that, that means get up. Uh, go go, go. so they're, they're pretty quick and you know they they had to go through all that data you know during IVSS time um, I think it was the, uh, I think it was the middle of January to um, what was it the end of March because IVSS was due April 1st so those months were a little long because we didn't get to take as many measurements because we had to write that entire time you know so most of their most of their research Kind of wrapped up. Um, I think the cutoff was early February, maybe middle of February is where we had to stop it. So they were taking a lot of data from, um, most of the teams were taking a lot of data from like September to February because we had to have a, a cut point to actually make that work. I will tell you one thing, we did submit nine projects for IBSS this year and that's not a brag, but my first year we had one and we didn't know what we were doing and looking back it was garbage. And then last year, and then this year, I was very happy um, with what we submitted um, because we had examples from the past. We, we were able to kind of, you know, see what others, we, we knew where to look for what other schools had done, what we had done, and then the kids started researching and they, they put it all together. I mean, that's, that's a pretty huge task for a group consisting mostly of sixth graders, something like that. So, Hey, Jen. <laughs> Yes. I was just going to say, I've been to uh, Jeff's uh, classroom a bunch of times, and, and it is really amazing, you know, when you ask about kids collecting their data. They just seem to know exactly what to do, and they go out, and they, they really enjoy taking the data and then talking to you about it. You know, they're not, uh, they're not timid about it. I think one of the things, too, I can – I hear all the time, you know, of um, – of people saying, well, you know, it's tough in teaching and teaching is tough and teachers can't have a lot of fun. Kids can't have a lot of fun. But I think that's one of the things I noticed in Jeff's classroom that they're always doing science, but the kids are happy. They're really well behaved. They're really focused. And, and I, I think it really shows what, uh, what a school can, can be, what a classroom can be and 
uh, not only as a great globe teacher, but just a teacher period that uh, is really a model and and I think uh, provides a lot of optimism for the future of, of teaching. So uh, congratulations to him on all his work. I appreciate that. Thank you. It, it had like you know Dave said you know I'm I like to laugh I like to joke I I have a lot of energy um, I'm actually very quiet at home but I uh, at, at work I have a lot of energy and and kids need that you know and okay kids we're gonna go take a surface temperature measurement today it's not like that I mean you got to hype up that laser what can that laser do you know I mean and and that, that's just the way you have to approach it all you know when. And, and once they start taking those measurements and they start bringing them in, all the measurements, I forgot to have um, they get recorded daily on a dry erase board in my classroom. I have, I have the uh, data board and um, that was something I started three years ago when I found this old dry erase board and um, I had somebody cover my class. I literally ran down to the, the cafeteria where it was and I, I got it before anybody else could feel the thing. I, I carried it back like this over my head through the hallway, the very little room on each side. I wanted this thing. And then I taped off, you know, all these sections. And then I used one of those um, Sharpie paint markers and I gave each group like their own little section. And so when they come back in every day, they're changing their numbers and then they erase the numbers the next day and then they put up the new numbers. And so those numbers are always visible and it's just it's data literacy, you know, and, and the more they see it, the more they see them change. And occasionally you talk about it. it it's so rich because th those numbers speak and, and Dr. Murphy uh, called it, um, you know, the, the data tell stories. He said that to me last year at the SRS and my God, he's right. They, it really does, you know, and, and that's what we have been doing. So that, that data board has been a, a really, really cool thing that I've, I'm, I, I literally have this huge board just dedicated to student data and they're the only ones that can touch it. So that's a great idea. I love that. Um, there's two more questions. So uh, how much support did you get from your school principal, especially when you started doing globe with the students? That's the first one. My, my first year, um, uh, Mrs. Um, Ferguson stole me from uh, Weiss Elementary. She said, Jeff, I really want you to come to Shoemate and work for me. And so I kind of had an in right out of the gate because um, she, uh, she wanted me to come to the building as it was. So that I was really fortunate there and, and she, trust me. And it was so cool. And, you know, all I had to do was just explain, you know, the impact and, and show her the Globe website. And I said, boss, you see that little thing right there that says Shoemate Middle School? This is international, all right? So for principals, it's not just, I mean, they, they love that it's good science, but they like, the district likes that little PR thing too, you know? And so the more I showed that and the more I put that on the Shoemate Science Facebook page, you know, when I would find it scrolling by, you know, everybody was kind of like, wow, he might be onto something. And, you know, that was, I, I used that on the cell with, with, um, Mr. Cassie, who took over, over after Mrs. Ferguson retired, um, when I discussed the idea, um, I said, listen, I, last year I was only able to do two projects with these kids. I said, this year I want to do like maybe three or four. You know, let's, let's get more kids doing this. Let's get more science, more math, more writing. Um, even social studies is included in on this. I mean, it's all the way around. And I said, if you give me this opportunity, I promise you, I will have, you know, more kids doing it, more projects. Lo and behold, we had nine. And he was just like, dude, I don't know how you did that. You know, and, you know, the more we do it, the more they see the value in it. And they come in, they watch, they talk to the kids, the kids talk to them. You know, it's, it's, it's sold. It's delivered. It's there, you know. All right, and the uh, other question is, do your students develop the research questions before they start collecting data or after they look at some data? Um, they have, they uh, are gonna do when they start. And, um, you know, most of them are in sixth grade and they've never done anything like this. Uh, they, they've got a good idea, but along the way they, it requires a little tweaking or a little, you know, revisiting. I know Dr. Butler and um, Dave Marillet, they were, they were awesome because, um, 
you know, they would look at their work and they would say, hey, are you really on the, the track that you want to be? Are you really doing what you think you should be doing, you know? And so we just kept redefining, you know, their hypothesis. We made sure it was right. And, you know, it, 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 was, it was, it changed a little bit, but not a ton, you know? But, you know, the cool thing is, is that next year, uh, if I get to do this again, which by the sounds of it, it's going to happen, um, all of the, the Globe students that did it this year, they, they'll, they'll come back and we only have like five or six seats that are going to be available because of the eighth graders that are leaving, you know. So, um, you know, the application process to get in is going to be a, a pretty big thing. And I'm, I'm really interested to see what these kids can do year number two, where it, I don't have to hold their hand as much as, as I did at the beginning of the year. You know, there was a lot of modeling. There was a lot of practice. There was a lot of, um, how did you do this? Explain it to me. Oh, whoops, you missed that step there. You got to do it again, you know? So next year, I'm kind of excited to see what they can do when we turn them loose a little more, you know? Have you been able to recruit other teachers to uh, do GLOBE in your school? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just today I put um, Mrs. Gardner in touch with uh, Dorian Janney um, because next year she's gonna have a health and diseases um, elective. And uh, Dorian's very passionate about Mission Mosquito. And so um, uh, I, I encouraged Mrs. Gardner to get GLOBE certified and um, start working maybe with, with Dorian. How can we pull that in? And how can the kids take these measurements, monitor this, submit you know, more GLOBE data on behalf of Shoemate and make it real world? So uh, at the end of the school day today, she, um, she walked into my room and she's like, Jeff, next week at 1.30, high five. And, and she was so excited because Dorian's going to have a, a webinar with her next week and she's going to, you know, give her the ideas and, and help her get Globe certified. And she's a rock star too. So we're, we're adding more, you know, um, would I like to see more students do Globe advisory? Yeah. But you know, it's, it's a pretty big commitment uh, to do so. And, and we'll see, maybe we can talk some more people into helping out, you know. Hey, Jeff, can you tell them about uh, recruiting students through the University of Michigan Dearborn? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, um, like I said uh, earlier, um, I'm also a 75% uh, um, uh, professor. So, my, my day job is 100%, and then uh, my night job is 75%. And I think robotics counts as like 15%, so I'm a 1.9 on the jobs right now. Um, but uh, my students at U of M Dearborn, uh, in two of my classes, science methods and science capstone, um, I actually require um, for my midterm, these students become GLOBE certified. And so the first time uh, you do this with me, they have to get certified intro to GLOBE, atmosphere, pedosphere, uh, SMAP, um, clouds, air temp and surface temperature. And you know, the beauty is, they, they have to do the training modules online. Uh, they take the quizzes, have to pass with 80%. And then at the very end, um, they become GLOBE certified that goes on their resume. It's good science for them. Hopefully it gets used in the future in their classrooms. And, um, you know, it's just, it's a really good thing all the way around. And it means more to them. It means more to me. Um, it's, it's they, don't, they like doing it. And it's one less horrible exam I have to grade. So there are a few secrets that I have let out tonight on this camera and you were recording too. Oh my goodness. So, um, yeah. We can talk later about what you want me to cut out. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I'm as real as I, I don't care at all. So th that's what we strive for the real, you know, and, and I'm okay with it. Well, we're just um, at the water cooler, you know, so <laughs> If you saw me in the morning, it's it's the coffee pot, not the water cooler. <laughs> to do all of this, I drink a lot of coffee. That's that's my one thing. Yeah, that's that's my turbo. So that's the big. <laughs> Marilay just asked my good friend Marilay. She just asked the question. She said, "As a seasoned Globe teacher, is there something you would like to see new or more of in Globe?" And um, you know, the the only thing I ask. Um, personally as a middle school teacher is when 
we assess these projects, both IVSS and SRS, when we, when we look at them and the overall quality, you know, the, the biggest thing I ask is I, I really feel that the junior high projects should be looked at in a different set of eyes than the high school projects. And, and last year, um, you know, some of the stuff that I saw, I didn't, I didn't, I felt like junior high kids were competing against high school kids and any, any high school team is going to have the leg up on, on junior high, you know? And so, you know, just getting them there and, and getting it done is, is a big thing. But I think in terms of, you know, when you, you do stuff like that for kids, you know, if you bring in a bunch of junior high kids and compete against the high school kids and they all get their faces slapped off, you know, that kind of, it kind of gets a little frustrating for them. And, you know, not every, I'm not saying every kid deserves a, a participation ribbon or whatever. I'm, I'm not, you know, advocating for that. I'm just saying, you know, I think that in terms of how we assess these and look at them, I think that would be more, more appropriate. That's, that's my only beef in the whole thing, but I, I love what we do. And I, I love, I love globe. So I'm very, very committed to what we do with it. Hey Jeff, I have a question for you. So sure. we, train, we train a lot of teachers in GLOBE, and the biggest reason overall that we get from those who don't end up implementing it in their classroom is because of the demands of standardized testing. Um, so especially when you first started out, how, how did you manage to integrate it into your curriculum, and do you have any recommendations for new teachers who are starting out? Well, with, with that being said, you know, it, it's it's just a matter of how you approach it. When I started the Salmon Project, um, you know, years ago, in, I, I was a fourth grade teacher, and the standards in third grade and fifth grade align much better to that project than fourth grade, but I refused to, to let it go. And so what I did was um, I, I linked it to students who use scientific tools to measure, you know, and, and collect data it was one of those standards, but that was my loophole to pull it in. And so with, um, with globe, um, you know, for me, I think with my sixth graders, I tied it to weather, you know, because we had that curriculum in sixth grade. So I tied it to weather and I could justify students going outside and, and doing it that way. But for me, I was never, um, I, I don't think I was ever really pushed or questioned real hard about it. It was, there was kind of a, you know, uh, acknowledgement from Mrs. Ferguson that this is good, it better be good, and if it's not, you're in trouble, Jeff, and, and I respected that, and so we, you know, rolled on from there, and, you know, it's been fine. So as far as standardized tests go, um, if you look at, in the state of Michigan, the M-STEP example online, just the example of what to expect for your students, that thing is loaded with charts, graphs, uh, depth of knowledge, two, uh, two at the lowest, three and four, where these, well, not four so much, but just a high three. And so when you, when you look at that, you, you know, the, the globe work that you do, it aligns so well because it's all organic data that you're, you're collecting at your school that you can turn around and graph, and it's meaningful because it was done right there at your place. And that, that actually helped them get ready for these standardized tests. So if you look at our M-STEP example in Michigan, that thing looks more like a reading test and a math test than a science test. It has a splash of science in there for flavor, but my goodness, you know, so just having that, that data and being data literate is, it's a huge, huge thing. It's, it totally benefits it, my opinion, you know, so. Very cool. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Any final questions? We're coming up on the end of the hour or at least um, Jeff's been talking for a while, so I know um, we'll give everybody kind of that count of seven to see if there's any other questions. Feel free to chat, put something in the chat box, or I just ask your question. I thought of one more. So, <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things that we're trying to do with uh, Globe Mission Earth uh, one of our goals is to do something we're calling vertical integration, meaning having older students work with younger students in GLOBE. And so do you have any uh, plans to do anything like that or have you done anything like that? Um, I've, I've used the train the trainer method. Um, and that was before I had GLOBE advisory. So what I did was um, we, 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 
Mr. K at the time when, when he was kind of helping out with it, what we did is we, you know, kind of scouted the kids for like the first two weeks. And then we offered it up to the ones that were the go-getters, you know, do you want to be a globe leader? And, you know, 90% of the time those kids stepped up and they said, yes. So what we did after that is um, at the beginning of every hour, I got one of our office aides to come in my classroom after I got the kids started. And then for the first two weeks, I, I really helped those kids become the globe leaders. So week number one, I did all the measurements. And then um, week two, I walked with them, but they, they did the measurement uh, on themselves. And I just critique week number three, let them go on their own but when they got back and they were doing it I was I was watching them again and so that that initial investment although it can be kind of a, a headache um it's really a cool thing because once you get those kids up and rolling then you know you're good to go for the next eight nine months you know and so when when you invest heavy at the beginning you know the the outcome is is so much greater like teaching them to ride a bicycle yeah. Yeah. And, you know, for me, I, I, I only had sixth graders doing it for the last two years. And then um, this year I have um, six, seven and eight in my advisory. But, you know, some of the eighth graders, you know, they were a little rusty because they haven't done Globe for a little while. And so they were really all at the same spot coming in. But, you know, the five or six new kids that that the ones coming back, the returning Globe rock stars are going to be the ones showing them, and then they're going to be on plane in no time. That's what we want. Cool. Thanks. My uh, my Globe students today actually they they just found out that um, I'm I'm keeping two of the teams together um, next week. The uh, SMAP team and the Mosquito team. I'm keeping them together, and the other. Um, the other teams, I am busting them up starting next week. I'm only keeping one person of each team there. And then I'm going to send the other two students to different teams. So I'm going to keep one as an expert. And then since the end of the year is coming, I want to make them versatile for next year. And so I want them to go get a taste. I want them to sample what the other teams are doing. So when they come back next year, if they want to change what they're, they're doing, um, they'll they'll know what to do um they did not like me today but i i don't care i want them i want them ready to go for next year and um that's that's that so we'll we'll see how it goes next week i might have 10 openings for next year no, i'm just kidding <laughs> that's a really interesting model you know a lot of our teachers they have their students all do the exact same protocols which is fine that's one way of doing it but your approach is is uh quite diverse <laughs> well, we want them to see as much as they can and we want them to understand is you know the our planet i mean there's so many different things going on and so many different cool things you can measure and you know i i don't want to limit us to just the the protocols that i listed earlier in the presentation you know next year maybe we can find some other things that we can we can pull in so well, you're also giving them a chance to get at that concept of earth as a system, right? So if they're learning different protocols, they can see how what they're doing is related to the other ones, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, uh, I'd also like to get some more technology next year. I'd, I'd like to maybe find, um, I, you know, some funding to maybe get some more iPads or something because the... Um, the Globe Observer is um, such a versatile app now um, with tree height, with mosquitoes, land cover. Um, I have students kind of fighting over that right now, my, my iPad. So it, it's everything's timed. You know, um, Blake, Miranda, and Bella have first dibs on the iPad because they're going to go take cloud measurements for Marillet. And then they're going to quick bring that back inside. And then the mosquito team's going to take the iPad. They're going to bring it outside. They're going to go do their measurement with it. And then um, if they have enough time, they're going to squeeze the land cover in. So they're finding different spots doing that land cover measurement. And so we're, we're getting three measurements off that thing within 25, about 20 minutes. That's, that's pretty good. Um, but uh, Dave knows I'm competitive and I like, I like stacking those numbers up. And so, um, you know, more technology, more, more data, you know.
All right, uh, and uh, let us know if you want to do aerosols. So you, you've been offered to be hooked up with Dr. Pippin by our friends at NASA. So if you want to take that one on. <laughs> Bring it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm game, let's do it. Dave, let's make this happen. <laughs> Somehow I knew <laughs> that you would say yes, but. <laughs> All that's right. what we do in Wayne County, right, Dave? That's that's how we roll. We hope to uh, to get uh, Jeff uh, one of the rovers for the summer, uh, the remote control boats that we have in the Aaron Project. So hopefully, we can uh, start integrating that in as well. <laughs> There's actually one more thing that I think I forgot to mention is that um, our good friends at WeatherStem that I work with. Uh, they have just rolled out a new system that um, I believe it's called Skyweather, and it's it's working with Raspberry Pi, and um, it's um, not as big a unit as the one that we put on the Shoemate Carlson campus, but the technology is brand new, like out the gate, like two weeks ago, and uh, I'm really curious to see what the the new system will be able to do. Is is it able to um, upload data to the globe like weather our station does and you know if so um you know that could be you know a, a very versatile option for a lot of teachers around our country that want a, a um a system set up for not just public safety but could potentially you know be dumped into the globe database to be used internationally that's that's really what i'm curious about here is you know is that like that's something that we could somehow link up we, Dave and I had talked about it just a little bit. So, anywho. Awesome. All right. So, with that, I'm going to call it a night. Hey, I know, um, uh, yes, Dave. How about one more thing? Because <laughs> um, it, it, it just dawned on me, um, and I don't know if we've talked about it, Jeff, that uh, Globe is coming out with that uh, new weather unit in the middle-ish of May, I think in another two weeks, isn't it, Jen? And um, I'll send you some stuff. I don't know if you've followed it along, but they've been working with BSCS over the past two years to develop in, well, a kind of a globe-based weather unit for middle school students. So um, you might like to take a look at it and be curious how the, you know, if you thought it would be worthwhile. I think they're doing a webinar in two weeks or something, and then it'll be available online after that. So something we can talk about. Cool. Let's do it. Tracy, thank you. I appreciate that. And thank you. All right. Jen, you're muted. <laughs> there we go. I was just saying thank you for to everyone that was online and to those of you that are watching at your leisure at home uh, from the comfort of hopefully a nice comfy chair um, because we're going to post this recording there and uh, share it out widely with the Globe community. We'll make sure it's on our Facebook uh, educators page so that those links are all there. Um, Jeff, thank you so much for coming on and talking about what GLOBE looks like. I think that um, you have a great model with that advisory. And so I hope that that's shared widely and we'll definitely do our part to do that um, and get that word out because I think it's a great model. And obviously productive one. <laughs> I, I'm excited to meet many of you in Detroit this summer. Um, you are like my rock stars, you know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm geeked, you know, I, our district is allowing me to go and, you know, Mr. Wagner is a really cool guy. When I asked him, he said, yep, you're going. I'm like, yes. So I get to, I get to hang out with a lot of you that I've never got to meet, but I will uh, this summer and I'm looking forward to it most definitely. So. Great. So we'll see you in just a couple months then. Actually, it's more like weeks now. Um, yeah. All right. Thanks.